was life good morning happy easter as we celebrate our risen king our savior jesus christ our lord he has risen he has risen indeed happy easter y'all i see all y'all saying happy easter happy easter john happy easter becky sue hey guys um as you tune in, we've also we're, we're doing our podcast as well for Backwards Life. Also, all of our social media, it's all Backwards Life. Everything is Backwards Life. Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, uh, everything is Backwards Life. So y'all can just go to any social media platform for the most part, and y'all find us on Backwards Life. So we're running this podcast. This is, I think, our, our seventh or eighth week that we've done this podcast. So everything that I speak is actually being recorded uh, for our podcast as well as Facebook Live. So my name... They call me Davy Crockett. I've uh, been with Backwards Life for nine years. Been doing, been speaking here live on Facebook every Sunday. I think I've only missed a couple Sundays um, for over a year and a half now. So I am honored uh, to be able to share a word with you guys this morning. And what better day to do it on uh, than Easter as we celebrate the resurrection of our risen King. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So y'all just... Y'all keep tuning in. I see y'all, man, Alberta, Canada, y'all keep tuning in. I've got a great message that's kind of what we've been talking about for the past three weeks, um, that God speaks before he does, that God shows us things, tells us things. He knows all things. Uh, He is a part of all things. And if we seek him with a cultivated heart, with ears ready to listen, with eyes ready to see the way he sees, and if we long and chase after his heart, we hunt after him with everything that we've got that he will show us great and mighty things that we do not know. And you know that all throughout the scriptures from Old Testament, all the, the prophecies later on in the, in, the, uh, in the Old Testament from Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, I mean, all of them lining up that, that are the tail end are speaking of the Messiah, the one who is to come and what, his, what he was going to do and how he was going to come. And you know, the people of the day of the, the times when Jesus was walking this earth, he was telling them of what was to come, but yet they were deafened. They had, they had hard hearts and deafened ears. They were blind. They couldn't see who he was for what he was and what he was doing. Uh, ridiculed him, told him he was blaspheming, um, and basically crucified him. But, but because of that, we now, because of what Jesus has done, we now can experience this abundant life. So, I want to start off reading uh, something that we do every Easter um, as a family. We did it last night, uh, my wife and my daughter, before we took communion. We read uh, read three passages of scripture. I'm going to read only one of them. But if you want to go read this, I I definitely recommend you read this. So one is in Psalms 22. Another one is in Isaiah 53. And then also in John 6 and even uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 
It talks about Paul and taking communion and what this means. But I just want to read to you when Isaiah prophesied of what was to come, the Messiah, and explained who Jesus was. And then we're going to jump into the New Testament. We're going to jump into what Jesus did for us and how this the old Adam from sin and Adam and Eve in the garden, how Jesus attached this sin, and that's what he went to the cross for. That's how he defeated the enemy. That's how he defeated the, Satan. And we have this resurrection power that's within us. But the question is, do we really believe it? Do we have the power? As you saw the title of the sermon. So I want to open us up in a word of prayer. I want to invite the Holy Spirit. I want to humble myself before the Lord. I want him to open our eyes and our ears so that we can understand and see the scriptures that God can work through us and in us. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you. You are the risen King. You are alive. You are speaking and you are walking amongst us. Father, right now, I humble myself before you as a servant speaking your word. Father, send your Holy Spirit to speak through me. It's all about you. It's all about your son. It's all about what you're doing in our lives. So Father, as I speak, may you cultivate the hearts of those who are listening. May they hear just how great and mighty you are. And may they come to know who you are and the plans that you have for them. So Father, we join you in celebrating in such a time as this, as we have this resurrection power living in us, that we know this to in our innermost being that we walk in the fullness of you. We walk in the same power that Jesus walked in. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen. It is Easter Sunday, and this is probably when churches are flooded, Christmas and Easter, that celebrate the birth of Christ and the resurrection of Christ. Um, it is a big day as we look back on what was spoken through the prophets, as we look back on the plans that God had for us. And I don't think we really realize the times that we live in. It's an amazing time. I want to read Isaiah 53, and then I want to jump to when the two Marys uh, went to the grave and that Jesus was not there. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to open up to Isaiah 53 and listen in. And just, just open your mind, just close your eyes, allow the Holy Spirit just to, to just work in you as I read this out. Isaiah 53, this is Isaiah prophesying of uh, Jesus coming. It says, Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and was esteemed not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, Yet we consider him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence. Nor was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, 
He will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressions. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressions. It's Isaiah 53. Such a powerful verse that explains who Jesus is. And something that just, it blows my mind, the incarnation of Jesus. Jesus was, he was, he was fully divine. He was fully God and he was fully human. He understood everything that we were walking through. He understands all of our struggles. He understands all of our burdens. He understands what heartache is because he went through the same things we did. Jesus didn't step out of heaven. He didn't step down from heaven and wearing robes and tassels. No, he did it in the most humiliating way. God, the thing I love about God's plan and God's story, Jesus came to demolish all barriers, to demolish all racial barriers that are built up, to demolish all social statuses that are built up, all the denominations that are built up. Jesus came to demolish all of these. He made the way. He was the way. He was born through a virgin. He was born through a female, his, his mother Mary, who was obedient and said, Lord, have your way in my life. He was given the name Jesus, meaning God with us, Emmanuel, God with us. He came, he was raised up, he was filled, he was baptized by the Holy Spirit, which then led him out to this wilderness where the enemy, the devil, Satan, came and attacked him. He was fasting for 40 days, he was hungry, and the the enemy hit him with every single thing that he had, every tool that he had to try and gain dominion. You see what happened back in, in Genesis 1 with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve gave authority gave the authority that satan had lost gave it to satan by sinning by taking and eating of the apple eating from the tree of uh, of good and evil because they ate of that they gave satan the opportunity to come into their lives and it was from then that the ground was cursed amongst them that was the first adam this is the second adam jesus didn't fall into that temptation Jesus stayed true to what the Father had given him. Why? Because Jesus knew his identity, his true identity, which was in the Father. He only spoke what the Father told him to speak, and he only did what the Father told him to do. Jesus had the Father in, at the forefront of his mind in everything that he did. There was no deceit in his mouth. He never once said anything that was foul or ill. No, he spoke truth. And sometimes that truth, most times that truth went against the ways of the world. Jesus was obedient even unto death for what he did on the cross for us, was for us. He went to the cross for both you and I so that at the sin that Adam and Eve had, had committed in, in, in the whole fall of man in Genesis 3, Jesus attached this, the sin was attached to his body, was attached to him as he was carrying the, our, our sin, our transgressions, our iniquity. He was carrying everything that we did, everything that we do that is not right, in in the eyes of God that is not perfect. He had it on his shoulders. See, Jesus attached the sin because he had to conquer the enemy. He had to gain back this full authority that was actually handed over, that was given to the enemy. And he did so by going to the cross. He was quiet. He didn't speak anything. It says in here that his he was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. He was crucified. Jesus was hard pressed. He was so hard pressed. When he was in the garden, he was praying three times, and on the third time, he actually sweated blood, as the Gospels tell us. He was burdened. And he was telling the disciples to keep watch and pray. The last things that Jesus said before he took his last breath was to day, meaning it is finished. And it was at that moment in time that the veil, which blocked access from us to the Father, 
it was torn. It wasn't torn from the bottom to the top. It was torn from the top to the bottom just to show how divine God is, that it was God's doing. And the world went dark for three days. For three days, it was dark. I couldn't imagine the mourning that was going on. The darkness that was going on, realizing that they had just crucified the Christ, the Messiah, the one that was coming for them to forgive them of their sins, that they would have and experience this resurrection life. Jesus spoke in Matthew 16, 21. And this is what we've been covering over the past three weeks. God speaks before he does. Jesus spoke before, he, before it actually happened. He did this right after he asked Peter who he was. Who do you say I am? And he asked this, he asked this question three times to Peter. He says, you are the Christ. You are Jesus. You are the one. You are the Messiah. And then Jesus says this right after he had this whole conversation with Peter. He says this in Matthew 16, 21. He says, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. They failed to see it. He spoke to them several times, showing them why he had come and who he was and the purpose of him coming was to destroy the devil's work. He was coming to, to, to put this iniquity, this sin on his shoulders. And he was gonna be, his body was gonna be broken. He was gonna be poured out like a, a drink offering. He was gonna be, his blood was gonna be shed. And it was so that we now can have access to the Father. If you fast forward to the conquest in Matthew 28, it says, After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to his disciples. Suddenly, suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go ahead and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. He is not here, for he has risen. He is not here, for he has risen. Did y'all catch that when I said it? Jesus said that he was going to be raised on the third day. The disciples weren't there, and he had told this to the disciples. They didn't believe it. They didn't know it. God used Mary and Mary to share the good news. And the angel of the Lord said, just as Jesus said it was going to happen, it did happen. And I was just praying this morning in the middle of the night, I was just reflecting on this process and this trial of what Jesus was walking through and the things that he had to go through to get to us. Jesus literally went through hell to get to us. 
Jesus made the way. He was obedient to what the Father said. He was crucified in the flesh so that he could be raised to life. He is now, he came after his resurrection. He didn't just appear to the disciples. He appeared to 500 others. He was with them for 40 days. And then he ascended into heaven. And we know this because of the eyewitnesses that were spoken. The book of Luke, who also Luke also wrote the book of Acts. It says in Luke 1, it was because of the eyewitnesses. Eyewitnesses give the every account. I can tell you if I saw something with my own eyes, that this was true. This truly did happen. I saw it. Jesus came to life. He is resurrected. He is living. He is here. He is with us. He has not left us. He's never going to leave us. He's going to come back. And when he does, he's going to come back riding on a white horse. And the only thing that's going to be in heaven that's going to be of this earth, the only thing that's going to be in heaven that's of this earth are the scars that he has on his hands and his feet. That's the only thing. Jesus speaks, the Lord speaks, the Holy Spirit speaks, the Father speaks before it actually happens. The Father is speaking to both you and I right now. He is telling us of what is yet to come that hasn't, that hasn't come yet. And I can tell you that those promises are yes and amen. Every single one of them. There is no doubt. We're not to have doubt like the disciples did. We're to trust in him in all of our capacity, in every fiber of our being, knowing that what he, when he speaks, it will happen. Every single promise in the Bible is for both you and I. The problem is, do we believe it? Do we understand it? It says this in first, uh, 2 Corinthians it says, For the Son, God, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are always yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us, by us to the glory of God. Now it is uh, it is. God, who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ, he anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing us for what is yet to come. It says it right there. Jesus now sits at the right hand of the Father, and he is interceding for us. He sent the same Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that when Jesus was walking this earth, when he was speaking the words of God, when he was doing what God called him to do, he was working through the power of the Holy Spirit. He sent that same Holy Spirit that, was, that resurrected him from the grave, he sent it to us to dwell in us. And it's given to us as a free gift for, for us who believe, who take hold, to take everything that he has given us. If we truly believe it, we have that same power. It's up to us to walk into the fullness of Christ. It's up to us to raise the dead. It's up to us to, seal, to heal the sick. If we surrender to the Spirit's working and we join with Him in His mission, God's going to take us and show us great and mighty things that we do not know. How? Through the power and the working of the Holy Spirit. The same power that Jesus had walking around this earth, we now have. It's ours. But we've got to take it. We've got to receive this gift. We can't earn it. No. It was given to us. It was because of what Jesus did on the cross. And it's when we come to know who he is that we accept him. That we don't just know it as head knowledge. We don't just know it as, hey, this is, we're just praying for safe travels. No, we know this with every fiber in our being. 1 John 5, 3 says that we can know for certain, know for certain that we have eternal life. The kingdom of heaven is here. But the question is, do we see it? Do we receive it? God is speaking and God is working. God just wants to have an intimate relationship with you. He did so through sending his son, Jesus. An intimate relationship is when you have an intimate relationship with someone, you're talking to them every single day. You're journaling with them. You're dialoguing with them. You're sitting at his feet. I love that passage that... You know, after he was resurrected from the grave, 
Mary and Mary, what did they do? The first thing they did, so they, they suddenly met him and he said, greetings. They came to him, they clasped his feet and they worshiped him. That's what we should be doing every single day is worshiping his feet. He is the King of King and he is the Lord of Lords. He is the Alpha and the Omega. We know how this book ends. This book ends with Jesus coming back. Us reigning with him, being clothed in his righteousness, sitting with him in heaven. The opportunity is here. It's for you right now today. And from this day on, this day forward, if we just fall at his feet, we don't just celebrate the resurrected king just on Easter. No, it's every day, every moment, every second of our life that we have this resurrection power living on the inside of us. But it's up to us to crucify our flesh, our fleshly desires, just like Jesus did. He was broken and multiplied so that he can be given and distributed out for our good. How are we ever gonna lead people to Christ? How are we ever gonna do what Jesus did? We've gotta pick up our cross and we've gotta follow him just like he did. We've gotta go down the same journey and the same road just like he did. We've got to come to know first who we are in his eyes. We've got to crucify our flesh. We've got to put our agendas off. And we've got to surrender our lives to the Holy Spirit. Surrender our spirit to the Holy Spirit. And when we do so, we experience this abundant life. We've got to crucify just as Jesus did. It's a process in order to be raised to walk in his abundance of life. I'm not talking about the material life that's in the world today. I'm talking about to seeing and understanding the Father's heart, manifesting the gifts of the Spirit, the seven gifts of the Spirit, just like Jesus did. He longs to have a relationship with us. He longs for us to join in his work. But we've got to die to ourselves every day. We're all like seeds. That when you plant a seed, that seed has to die in order to produce the crop that it's, that it's supposed to produce. We've got to die to our flesh, die to our wants, and die to our pride. It says that the humble and the poor, they will see God. They will inherit the kingdom of God. God doesn't use our power, our strength. No. No. He uses our broken, our weaknesses, so that his power can be revealed. Remember, nothing attracted us to Jesus. Nothing of his appearance attracted us to him. We've got to remember this as we walk in the resurrection power. To walk in true humility. If the Son of Man came to serve, came to wash our feet, came to die for us, we've got to be willing to do the same. We've got to be willing to spend our time with amongst sinners, amongst the poor, amongst the hungry. I'm guilty of this too. The people that we avoid, Jesus engaged. I know it's uncomfortable, but I promise you it was extremely uncomfortable for Jesus. Put your trust, your trust and put your hope in him. That's all we have. It's in his hands. We've just got to recognize that. He paid it all, and Jesus is enough. He is the answer. He made a way, 
but we have to follow in his footsteps to find that way. It's a narrow path, but the Holy Spirit will lead us to it. We just gotta be willing. We gotta watch and we gotta pray and we gotta seek him with everything that we have. Jesus is not was risen, Jesus is risen. He is here. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. He is the God of peace, the God of all comfort. He is the only answer. Turn to him and he will lead. I wrote a paper um, last week for school and I want to leave you guys with this because this just, it just really struck me and it really just painted a, a picture in my mind. Every single one of these sayings, and it was talking about the incarnation of Christ, how he was fully God, he was fully divine, and he was fully human. And when I was reading this book, you know, it just, it just said this about these pictures, allow these pictures just to paint a picture in your mind. And when I read them, it just, it really struck me to, that I began just to, just to weep, recognizing just how much Jesus loves us, loves you, and that the Father sent his only son to show us the way and show us what we should be doing. I want to read this to you. Jesus, he hungers, but he feeds thousands. He is heavy with sleep, but walks lightly over the sea. He prays, but he hears prayers. He weeps, but he causes all tears to cease. He asks where Lazarus was laid, for he was a man, but yet he raises Lazarus, for he was God. He was sold by Judas Iscariot for very cheap, 30 pieces of silver, but he redeems the world. As a sheep, he is led to slaughter, but he is the shepherd of all the whole world. As a lamb is silent, he is the word. He is wounded, but yet he heals every disease. He dies, but yet he gives abundant life. We can't rejoice in the victory of the resurrection without rejoicing in his divine incarnation of how he came into this world. We must rejoice in Christ, his fullness of life from the very beginning to the end as he dwells amongst us today. So no matter what you're walking through this Easter, God knows your circumstance. God knows the challenges you are facing. God knows the struggles that you're walking through. Why? Because he walked amongst us. And he is, he is here amongst us today. And he is longing to lead you to the truth. He is longing to give you this abundant life, to give you this eternal life. But it's up to us to receive this gift. And how do we receive it? We receive it in faith. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you. We can't even express the thankfulness that we have in our heart. There's not even a word to express just what you have done for us. Father, we live in a time where we can have direct communion with you. We can have direct conversations. We can dialogue with you. And the only way we can do that is because you made the way through your son, Jesus Christ. You gave him as a guilt offering, as a sin offering. You gave him for us. So Father, this Easter, as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, who now sits at your right hand, as we celebrate this dissension of the Holy Spirit, the same power that walked with Christ as he was doing his ministry, as he was walking and talking, as he was breathing and speaking, Lord, 
Father, I pray that you would breathe that same breath of the Holy Spirit, that you would fill us up to the fullest measure that you have given us, that we will walk in the power and the authority that you have given us. I pray that as beloved children of God, that we will wake up and just see that the wool gets pulled off of our eyes, that we can just see this resurrection power that is living on the inside of us. That we just crucify our flesh, that we we pick up our cross and we just follow you with everything that we got, regardless if that means if we don't have enough money, if we don't have enough of anything, Lord, that you make a way. You always make a way. Jesus, you came to demolish any barriers, any obstacles. Your will will be done, Father, regardless of what we think or what we perceive. You are in control of all things, and I pray that we just take it day by day. Work in us, work through us. Search our hearts, O Lord. You know when we sit, you know every word before it comes off of our tongue. Father, I pray that you would just open our hearts right now, open our eyes and our ears. That no matter what we're walking through right now, that you are speaking and you are leading. You are the way, Jesus. You are the answer, Jesus. On this Easter, we just want to fall at your feet and we want to worship you. It is you who are mighty to save. Fill our gaps of brokenness, Lord. Raise us up to walk in the newness of life. And now the old is gone and the new has come. And we just say yes and amen in the name of Jesus. Amen. I thank y'all so much for tuning in. Hey, this Easter, y'all, y'all spend it with family. Reflect on what Christ has done for you. Reflect on the love that he has lavished upon us. I pray that it's just not head knowledge, but it's heart knowledge. So on behalf of all my brothers and sisters in the Backwoods Life family, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Walk in his way. You have the power, the resurrection power. It's yours for the taking. Receive it. God bless you. We love you. Happy Easter. Podcast. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Um, happy Easter. We love y'all. Greater things in store